You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. Speak Talk Radio is a non-profit ministry. We are dedicated to spreading the gospel of Jesus through our programs and special guests. We exist through the generous support of our listeners. If you are being blessed through this ministry and would like to give a love offering, go to our website and click on our donation page. Your donation will be processed through PayPal. Our prayer is that you may prosper, be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Unto the Lord, for He is good. When Christians Speak Talk Radio is a 501c3 nonprofit ministry. All of your gifts to this ministry are tax deductible. Go out to our website www.whenchristianspeak.com and click on our donation page. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Challenge to change, where transformation begins with you. Change appears to be one of the biggest hindrances to growth from relationships that I have encountered while in ministry. Our focus is usually on someone else and what they have done or are doing to us, instead of us being accountable to God and making sure we're not a stumbling block to ourselves or others. Challenge to change is about us taking personal responsibility for our Christian walk as we face challenges and issues and how to overcome them through biblical tools and techniques that we will discuss on this show. Everything about this show is encompassed in us depending on the Holy Spirit to edify, enrich, and transform lives by introducing individuals to a personal encounter with God's unconditional love. That is where real transformation begins and ends. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You don't know how excited I am. I say that every Thursday, so it, it must be real. But really tonight, man, Michelle and I have tried to, to get together on happy hour on Thursday night to be outside. And every Thursday, it was raining for a while. Then we had to bind the rain. So that, so now we got it. what we need. We're going to be outside. I, I'm, we're going to be outside. You can go outside and just take your phone and go outside. Sit on the porch. Get in your hammock. Do something different. Okay? All right. So anyway... Let's go ahead and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you in advance for all that you do for us, how you are always there. You're always present. Your, your word promises and says that you will never leave or forsake us, but you will be with us always until the end of the world. So you, we are never without you. And we just thank you in advance for everything that you purpose to do. We bind distractions that will try to hinder people from receiving your truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So continuing on, if loving you is hurting me, who has to change? I can't hear you. <laughs> who has to change? We have to change. Because if we don't, then what we're doing is we are agreeing to what is taking place in our lives. And we, we, if we are being mistreated mentally, emotionally, physically, or spiritually, then we have a decision that we need to make. And that decision is on us. God is not going to make that decision for you. You have to make it for yourself. He placed the worth on the inside of us by giving us his son. And it's up to us to live the life that he has designed for us because it's the correct life. It's the right life. Everything has been tested about him and he always proves himself. Not trying to, it's been established. So as a result of that, he doesn't have to show us anything, but his love allowed him to do just that. So God, just, 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 just know that no matter what's going on in your life, that he is the answer. We can try a lot of other stuff, but it still comes back to him. He knows it all, is all, and is above everything that we can we, we find in our lives. He has the answer, okay? All right, so tonight I'm going to talk about intellectual boundaries. And this is going to get a little special because it's one of the things we do. We talk about our ideas. We talk about our beliefs. We talk about uh, our thoughts. And so when we get into intellectual boundaries, 
is something that we need to make sure that we hold on to and recognize where we are and what to do in the midst of those things. So intellectual boundaries talks about how we communicate with others about our thoughts and our ideas. And we can even say our beliefs. So, you know, most of the time when you're talking to somebody and you're not talking about work, you end up talking about either the thoughts that you think, the ideas that you have, or the beliefs that you believe in. Like, you know, you might end up talking to a coworker about your beliefs, about your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And they might start talking to you about who they believe in and why they believe in such. And so um, just understand that our intellectual boundaries are the things that we communicate, either by what we say, by what we do, and how we do them. It's, um, it's feeling safe to respect others when they don't agree with our beliefs. So um, at a few few months ago, I was working with a guy who, who was a Muslim, and I made sure I respected his ideas, his beliefs, and vice versa. Um, and it's like he felt comfortable and I felt comfortable. Um, so it's just, it's just important to understand that based off your relationships with people, how you get to know them, uh, how you get to see them and their interaction with us will determine when that timing is right for there might be a time where had he continued to work, I would have brought up my beliefs about the Lord Jesus Christ in a relationship to draw him into being a Christian. But that timing wasn't right. And if you're always listening to what the Holy Spirit tells you, you will know when the timing is right. So it's about respecting other people and what they believe. It's awareness of uh, appropriate discussions. And what I mean by that is there are certain people, as you get to know them, and it might not take long, where you recognize that the appropriate boundary discussions that you ought to have with some people are limited meaning like a level one, where you talk about the weather, you talk about the sports, you talk about, uh, you know, the housing. Or with some people, you can go deeper. You can talk with them about politics. And you know when I say politics, that is a very divisive or intense conversation that you will have. Because you might be Republican and the other person might be a Democrat. And they are going to say why they chose each party. But with some people, you want to talk about level one, That's just the weather and sports, okay? (laughs) You don't want to go any deeper than that. But my hope is after we start discussing these things, you will start to see who those people are that you are supposed to have a level one with and who you're supposed to have a deeper relationship with as far as your intellectual conversations. Uh, Our response is when do you know when you are being dismissed or belittled? Do you know? And that's just, 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 just give us a thumbs up if this has happened to you and were you aware? So a thumbs up if, if this happened to you and you were aware. So you would know, okay, it's time to step away from this conversation. Start Time to start stepping away from this person. Was that an isolated incident or is that how that person responds to things? You know, some people just don't like you and you don't like some people. It's okay. So don't get deep with them. <laughs> All right, so the benefits. I feel like I'm talking fast. Let me talk fast here. A little bit, but you can't. Okay, all right, I'm, I'm excited. I'm outside. I'm outside. Okay, so the benefits of uh, intellectual boundaries is it develops a greater sense of your identity. How does you expressing your ideas, thoughts, and beliefs increase your identity? Because it shows you who you are. Because as the conversation, now, if you're in a healthy place or are you, if you're getting healthier, when the conversation starts to get more intense, you'll go with the conversation, not out of malice, not out of, I got something to prove, but you'll be able, if you know what you know and believe how you believe, you don't have to fight about that. You don't have to argue about what has worked for you. And for us, a relationship with Jesus Christ has worked for us. Some might disagree with that, but nevertheless, if you are, in agreement with what God has done in your life, then you don't have to defend that. You just talk about what he's done. It also, under uh, your identity, it, it, it gives you a sense of tolerance. Because if you know who you are, based on what you believe, what you think, and your ideas, then you don't have to fight for that. It's a statement. 
And imagine how healthy it is to be able to be quiet to the point where someone asks you, well, what, 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 what's wrong? What, what, what happened? I thought we were having a discussion. Yes, we were. But when it got intense, it got belittling, there were times where I needed to take a step away because that's not necessary. It, it, it creates your identity because it, it teaches you what you want. And that's extremely important. A lot of people think they know what they want, but when it comes down to it, it it's not there. So as you, you start to talk with other people and learn from other people and grow from other people in situations where you would normally not find yourself in, it, it's okay. It's okay to grow. It's okay to have a difference of opinion as long as it's still respectable. Also, how it helps with your identity, it gives you a sense of value and beliefs because you get to a place where in order to relate to people, you have to know what you believe. You have to know not only what you believe, but why you believe that way. Because it, it, it's a person can tell when you know what you're talking about. Can you tell when somebody put yes in the chat section if you can tell that a person does not know what they're talking about? OK. It enhances your ability for mental health or emotional well-being. Because if you're in a discussion where you can voice how you feel and learn and grow, then it, it, it leaves you, you know, it's like whenever you don't feel like you've you presented yourself, the enemy tries to come in and he tries to place condemnation on you. But the more you start to interact with people, talk with people, express your concerns or ideas, depending on what level they are, is the, the more you feel like, okay, I mentally said what was inappropriate. Instead of you going home and sharing it, well, you know, uh, this happened to such and such. Well, what did you say? Oh, I didn't say anything. It's okay to express how you feel and your mindset, okay? Because the more, the more you can express how you feel without the intensity of cussing people out, grabbing them, the better you can be about how you you present yourself because you only have second seconds before a person reads whether you're likable or not or approachable or not. You know, the Bible says if you want friends, you need to show yourself friendly. So the times and situations where you're, you're dealing with people that they talk about how nobody wants to be their friend, nobody talks to them, but are you following what the word says about showing yourself friendly? What's wrong with us approaching somebody and say, hey, you know, I saw you in church or I saw you such and such and uh, just wanted to, to speak with you, welcome you and so forth and so on. Michelle, we got a statement or a question? just want to let you know that Sonia can tell, okay. Tweety B can tell, okay. Madeline can tell okay. and Latrice. They can all tell when they've been belittled. OK. All right. OK. But see, I'm going to if not tonight, then it might be next Thursday. But I'm going to show you the steps. Well, let me put it better. I'm going to show you my internal dialogues that what I'm saying to myself when those situations occur. OK. Also, not only with your identity, but it, it enhances your peace and it enhances avoiding burn, burnout. Because if you are not expressing how you feel and the thoughts that you have when it's appropriate, then you come away with stuff that's been stacked up over time. So, you know, you, you, you had five situations that happened today where you did not use your intellectual boundaries and it got built and built and built. And then the next day, well, you come home and then you didn't express yourself. The next day you go to work and all those things are built up instead of checking one off per day, a per minute. Every time something happens, you talk to yourself about, OK, now this is the way that I want to process this. This is the way that I'm looking at that. This is what I want to share with the person. OK. And, and, and when you contact somebody, if you didn't say it right then, if you contact, always ask them, is this is this a good time to talk with you? I just want to share something with you. Um, you got 10 or 15 minutes. Now, if you put a minute time on it, don't go an hour and a half. If you say, do you have 15 minutes? Let it be 15 minutes. And if they want to talk more, you just say, well, you know, remember I mentioned that I just want to discuss uh, with you about 15 minutes. And if it's, is it okay with you? We, we, you have the extra time. Always make sure that people know that you're thinking about them. Okay. All right. So, what does respecting ideas and other pers perspectives mean to you? What does that mean to you? Um, does it mean that you listen? 
Does that mean that you're hearing? Because you do know listening and hearing two separate things. Are you comfortable? Are you starting to tense up? What does it mean to you? Well, let, let me tell you what it means to me. When I listen to another person's ideas or another person's perspective, I could learn because it, it might be um, it might be new to us, but we don't know everything. I, I mean, you know, we don't. And so as a result of that, when we step out in the world, step step out in relationships, we think we we might think we know it all. So what can they tell us? I learn all the time. I mean, Troy is teaching me stuff. This dude, yesterday I took him outside, right? Troy's, what would we say, nine months? Yes. Nine months. I got Troy's age right. And uh, so I said, okay. He normally sit on the step. And, and, and I saw him looking at the grass. And I said, well, maybe, man, maybe this dude want to get in the grass. So I take him off in the grass. And I got my, 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 my barefoot and everything. And I, I see how his feet and his look is about this grass that his feet is touching. So what I started doing, I started moving my feet around in the grass. Next thing I know, not only does he move his feet in the grass, but he takes off crawling down through the grass. And I mean, you know, so I learned from him. It's like, wow, when something is new and exciting, explore it. So now, you know, when it's time to go in, I had to grab the brother because he was, he was gone. Right? <laughs> but when you talk to people that you don't know, you can learn something from them. Ask questions. You can grow. Imagine that. By communicating with people you don't know or want to get to know better, you can grow from that relationship because they can show you something. They can say something that might change your life instead of us thinking that we always know everything. You can get a better understanding of them and the behaviors that they have. Wouldn't that be insightful when, <laughs> when you think a person just just is late all the time? Maybe there's something that's happening in their life on the way or before they get up. Maybe someone seems short all the time. Maybe by having a discussion with them, you can find out why. It's, it's a lot of things that, that we, when we get better, when a person knows that they're heard, man, you're talking about changing their lives. When a person knows that they're heard. Um, I'm doing, um, got a graduation coming up this, this Tuesday. It's a, um, Jobs for Life class that I teach with Boaz and Ruth. And there was this gentleman that was in the class. And he, you know, it's been pretty warm these last few days. And so in the class, he always came in with a hoodie on, a long sleeve hoodie, and it's hot outside, with a uh, pull down to about right here, and he had a hat on. And over the last three weeks, what ended up happening was, we confronted him about some things, not about the hoodie, but about the, him not taking notes. But the person that was beside him that he was with was taking notes. And that's a part of the class. You got, have to take notes. You have to be a participant of the class. And he withdrew in a lot of different ways. And then that one day, me and another assistant confronted him about the, those things. And what surprised me was that at the end of the class, he came up and shook my hand. And I was surprised by that because of the intensity of how we had a re, re, interaction with him. When people are mad, they normally don't shake the hand. Or if they shake the hand, they're trying to break it. <laughs> he did none of those things. And he said, I'll be in class. I'll be, I'll be back to class. So over that three weeks time span, we saw him started to interact, start to take notes, bring his notebook that we had given him and pen, not have to ask for any help. And, then this Thursday, what happened was when he came into class, I didn't recognize him because he had got his hair cut. He came in without the, the hoodie. He had a regular shirt on. He said good morning and he walked in with attitude. So by me spending time better understanding him in a intense conversation, he changed. And so I'm, I'm excited to hear what he's going to say during graduation because he thanked us. He said, this was incredible. Thank you so much for coming straight at me. All right. So t check this out. So a scripture in uh, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 13, it says, y'all check this out now. Make sure you're not in the food section. Ooh, F -O -O -L. It says, he who answers before he hears the facts, it is folly and shame to him. Why is it folly and shame to him? 
because had we listened, we would have learned what the situation and the challenge was. And that's what we did with this gentleman. We heard the scenarios about not being able to get a birth certificate where that's, those things are easily available. And we confronted him about it because that was what he said was hindering him from getting a job where the Holy Spirit had already told me there is a job waiting for him. All he has to do is follow through. So internal questions to ask. You, you want to ask yourself questions. How do I know I'm listening? When someone is talking, how do you know you are listening? Could you, in a moment of time, if they were to ask you, could you repeat back what they said? But sometimes what we'll do is we'll have the answer to their statement or how we don't agree with what's being shared. But what happens if you can totally listen? So how do you know you're listening? Could you do that? Number two, why did we stop listening? As they were starting to talk, <laughs> why did we stop listening to what they were saying? Was it because we didn't agree? Was it because we were offended? Was it because we know better? We were listening, but then we stopped. Now, what are the signs that you get when you feel dis oh, oh what did they say she so she, she just started laughing what did they say nicole said they went on for too long they went on for too long <laughs> okay what are the signs that your ideas are being dismissed or diminished do are you aware of that and so the question i ask myself if i'm aware that my discussion or my ideas or my beliefs are being dismissed or diminished then what i do is my next mindset says, what are my next steps? What are my next steps? What am I going to do next? And you guys, I'm telling you, there's a scripture for this. There, there's a scripture for everything that we encounter. Check this one out. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 7. And this is my next steps. Escape quickly from the company of fools. They are a waste of your time, a waste of your words. Did I make that clear about my next steps? <laughs> Escape quickly. That means it's time to go. And it's time to go. Okay? So y'all got that? Escape quickly. Did it say escape slowly? Did it say walk away real slow? Make excuses why you got to leave? You just said, okay. Have a good evening. Have a good morning. And it's time for you to walk. There's another, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 6 and, six and 7. This is the New Living Translation. Check out what it says. <laughs> Fool's words. See, sometimes when you get in a conversation with somebody, you want to see them get hurt when they come against you. But in reality, guys, their conversation, their actions, their beliefs will get them there, and you don't have to be a part of that. Okay? So pray for them. So it says, fool's words get them into constant, Calls. They are asking for a beating. <laughs> asking. Their mouths, the mouths of fools are their ruin. They trap themselves with their lips. As you, you, you want to, you don't want to take a person to the point where, where you are part of that right there. You can just end the conversation, guys. I, I see, and, and some people, based off what what you're comfortable with, you can say. Well, I can tell that we won't come to agreement on this conversation. So let, let, let's agree to move on and let's agree to, to disagree. But the key component is, but not be disagreeable. Share what you got. Corey was, has a question. Okay. He says, it's, when escaping quickly, should I be concerned if they are still talking? Well, you, you let them finish. And so make sure you let them finish because you don't want to be rude. So let them finish. Say, you know, escaping quickly means that as soon as the opportunity presents itself, which I'm hoping you would create, you say, now notice my hand, my, 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 my hand language, my body language. Okay, I can tell that we are not going to agree that, that you see it one way and I see it another way. So let's scratch this conversation and uh, I'll talk to you another day. I even waved them. I said, I'll talk to you another day. 
but I'm not going to talk to you about that. <laughs> so that, that, that should do it for you, core. I'm serious. So you never run, you never run out. You just explain that you recognize that there's a difference in opinion and it's okay for each of us to, to believe the way we believe, but it's time for me to go. Okay. All right. Internal questions that I ask myself when I'm encountering someone or talking with someone and I can sense certain things. Then one of the questions I ask myself, see, I always look at me first. That's the biggest challenge that we can face. You want to look at them first instead of looking at yourself. So number one, this is the question that I ask myself. Am I teachable? Because if I'm not teachable, then what they're sharing is no 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 benefit to me because I won't learn from them. And I won't learn because I must think I'm better than them. Am I teachable? That's the, no, that's the question that I ask. But check this one out. If I ask myself that question first, what do you think I'm, I'm asking about them? Are they teachable? Do you think that you can impact their life? Are they open to learn? The next one. Where, what could come from this? We're having a discussion, and it could be uh, intense. That's not my, my aim, but sometimes it just has to be that way. You know, we, we, we learned in, in situations in, in, uh, at, at Boys and Roof where we learned that there was a person that was living in one of our houses, and, and we thought our belief was that since they are working for us, then they would be a part of things that were happening and letting us know. And after we sat down and had a discussion with them, what we found out was by them being incarcerated, now we didn't ask them to snitch, but if you don't, if your heat went out because of a system failure, we felt like you would be the one that would come and say, hey, you know, the house I'm living in, you know, me and the guys, we don't have heat. So they wouldn't get heat because they didn't, they, everybody supposed to fill out a form. Or call us and let us know, hey, the heat just went out. And so we were thinking that person who lives there was sure that. But in reality, he felt that was like snitching. So he said, if there's no heat, I'm not going to say anything. And if they don't say anything, we'll just stay cold. So our mindset, we had to, where could this go? What did he teach us? That if anything pertaining to the house is involved, Although he works for us, he's not going to share that, even if it's to his benefit. So that was us learning, and that whole conversation changed. We just stopped right there and said, okay, I have a better understanding of now why that happened. So then where could what, what could come from this? As we hire other people who might be living in our houses, our mindset would be not depending on them to inform us of uh, things that need repair, Okay. What it would be, what would be the short and long term of this conversation? Because we, we know some people don't forgive, right? We know some people, if you talk with them and they don't like what you say, um, they will hold against you from now until Jesus comes. When all you asked was, do you mind passing me the salt? <laughs> I mean, you know, what what is the long and short term version of this? And this is a question that I ask myself, guys before I do any of discussions based off a person's profile. Is it worth it? Is it worth having the conversation that we are about to have? If it's not, don't do it. It's not worth it. And then regardless, I'm going to forgive. So that's that's not even a challenge right there. I'm going to forgive. But is it worth it? Is, is it worth the looks? Is it worth the, the interaction? Is it worth the backbiting? Is it worth the the uh, the tension that will be d- d- straight, um, portrayed because of you sharing truth with somebody? And this is how I'm able to walk away with that. Is it worth it? And if the answer comes back, no. You, you gotta... Nicole would like to know if we can start with that question. Yes. See, the thing about this one, Nicole... I don't have them in order, so you don't have to go step by step by step. Okay, so you can. These are just the internal questions I ask, and they are moved around depending who I'm re- interacting with. Is it worth it? And if I come back that is not, then this is how I end that statement 
that internal conversation with myself about the decision that I made. Guys, write this down. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 38. And it says in the New King James Version, but if anyone is ignorant, let him be ignorant still. So once I, I make that decision that is it worth it, then the next day out of my mouth is going to be the next time, the next step inside my internal dialogue will say, if, if anyone is ignorant, let him be ignorant still. Okay? All right? And that's it. So I'll see you guys on Sunday. You have a great evening. Uh, make sure you step outside and do something. And, and, and when you do it, man, just step out barefoot. Step out barefoot. Let, just let the air go, go through your feet. So see, that's just me telling you how I'm feeling. This concludes today's message on Challenge to Change, where real transformation begins with you, with Pastor Paul Morgan. If you are ever in the Richmond, Virginia area, join Pastor Paul for Sunday service at 10 a.m. at Chosen Generation Ministries. The website is www.chosenrva.com or call at 866-333-9505.